In this video, we're going to take a look at generating text using AI in the all new Adobe Captivate. So literally yesterday, if I was going to work on text within an Adobe Captivate project and work with AI, I would be leaving Adobe Captivate, going over to ChatGPT or possibly Gemini and asking those tools for the revised version of any text that I wanted to generate. The advantage of having this built into Adobe Captivate is I no longer need to leave Adobe Captivate in order to do that generative text stuff. So I can just simply type directly into the fields here, which I'll show you in a moment, and have it generate the results that I'm looking for. Let's take a look. Okay, before we start getting into generative AI and what it can do for you, the first thing you need to do is really make sure that it's actually enabled in your project so that you can use it. In the case of a Windows computer, you're going to click on the Edit drop-down menu and select Preferences to bring you into the Preferences window. If you're on a Mac, you're going to choose the Adobe Captivate drop-down menu and select Preferences from there. Uh, you'll see a section now with Adobe Captivate 13 and newer called Generative AI. And these various features of Generative AI can be enabled uh, simply by checking the checkboxes associated with each item. Perhaps your organization has a policy against using Generative AI to create avatars or uh, artificial people, let's say, you could unselect this option and make that not available for you. But for my purposes here today, I'm going to leave them all selected. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. So this first slide here, I really would prefer to see a definition of personal development rather than these various statements here, which personally I think are more aspirational messages rather than telling me what personal development is. So I can select this text component here and I can do one of two things. I can either click on generative AI and then choose generate text or if I already have my properties inspector open for that particular text item, I can click on generate text from here. The first time you use generate text on this particular text component, uh, you'll see some suggestions here. These are suggested actions. You don't have to use these, but these can be very useful if you know you want to change something, but you're not exactly sure what. You can read through these and, well, let's improve the readability or maybe change the audience or the tone. In this case here, I'm going to simply tell the AI what I want it to do. And I'm going to say, I would like a clear definition of personal development followed by, and you can be as specific as you need to be, a statement that says select start to find out more. That should give me some good results to start with here. Let's go ahead and click on the arrow icon here. Okay, so let's take a look at what the results are here. It says personal development is the continuous process of improving oneself through behaviors, activities, and practices that enhance one's skills, knowledge, and overall well-being. It involves setting goals, developing talents, and fostering a positive mindset to achieve a successful and fulfilling life. And it even includes the select start to find out more that I asked to include as well. So pretty good. And of course, I still have the original text here. I can choose to replace it as well. But I just want to point out a couple things here. We have the referring text. So if I wanted to continue with this conversation with AI, I of course can click on this and it will show the referring text and I can do further revisions here. So here's the text that I've come up with. 
I'm going to use this, but I'm going to ask another question, let's say. The other thing you can do if you don't want to replace the text or replace all the text, you can copy this text and paste it within this text box or even elsewhere if necessary. And finally, there's an ellipses icon here where you can provide feedback. And this just continues to improve the AI that's attached to Adobe's Generate Text here. So I can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending on how accurately it interpreted my request there. So I'm going to go ahead and press Replace. And that replaces the text that I previously had here with this new and improved message. On this slide, I've got some learning objectives and the only problem I have with them, they're, they're fine and everything, but they're not written in Bloom's taxonomy level one or more specifically the knowledge level, because of course I can't actually assess whether someone is stating their career goals correctly or building meaningful relationships uh, or demonstrating social responsibility uh, for that matter even develop self-awareness it's not something i can test for so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on generate text here and i'm going to ask the ai to rewrite these learning objectives for Bloom's taxonomy level one, and I'll just put knowledge in brackets. And I find that sometimes AI doesn't really recognize that. So I'll say, use words like recognize, identify, recall to state the learning objectives. Okay, we'll see what it does with that. Okay, so now we have recognize the self-importance, recognize the importance of self-awareness, uh, identify your career goals, recall strategies, recognize. So this is really good, actually. Um, now, it didn't include the first sentence here. This presentation has material that may help you too. Uh, if you want to include that, what you can do is copy this text and rather than replace the entire text block, you can paste that in. Now, the only criticism I have of the generated text here, even though it looks like it's itemized, you're gonna have to manually go through and just get that to work uh, a little bit better here. So I'm just going to make sure I've got uh, line breaks here. And that looks good there. And if you wanted to change these, we can go back up a level to our visual properties inspector. And rather than using uh, bullets, we can select that and change that to maybe the numbering approach, which might be better suited here. I'm going to increase the size of that to be 100%. That looks good to me. Okay, so in this particular example here, we have this section three. Are you wondering? I already have 5,000 plus followers on my online channel, and I'm part of a dozen social media chat groups, so is this relevant to me? Let's go ahead and find out if you tick all the essentials for maintaining healthy social relationships. So in this example, what I want to do is try and use more of the suggested actions that Adobe's provided here. Let's actually improve the readability of this and improve the readability so that the text is applicable to more people. Because right now I, I find it very specific. So let's just keep that in mind and we'll go ahead and see what it comes up with there. So welcome. Interesting, it keeps the variable. I wonder if that's still going to work. You might be thinking, I already have over 5,000 followers in my online channel, and I'm active in numerous social media groups. 
Yeah, I like this better, actually. So you, are you wondering, it says, you might be thinking, uh, and puts it in quotation marks, I already have over 5,000 followers on my online channel, and I'm active in numerous social media chat groups rather than saying dozen social media chat groups. Is this really relevant for me? So is this relevant to me? So it's definitely changed the way it's written here. Let's explore whether you have all the key elements needed to maintain healthy social relationships. Let's go ahead and find out if you tick all these. Settings. So I like this better. This actually works. And one of the things I'm very curious about now that I've replaced that, uh, let's hope that this will maintain itself. I don't know that it will, but that'll be an experiment for later. But this is a really good example, I think, of turning something and improving the readability so that obviously this is applicable to more people here. You know, in this example here, I kind of feel like, first of all, it's like, you know, digital whirlwind. Well, that kind of makes sense to me, but what does the author really mean by that? Just screens, more than just screens, in-person moments. It's a little bit uh, detached, I find. So I think what I'd like to do is ask the AI to change the audience. So we're going to change the audience to someone who is less familiar with digital culture and use less buzzwords. Let's see if it understands what I'm asking for it to do here. So imagine looking at your phone or computer and seeing pictures and messages from friends and family. You might click a heart to show you like something or send a smiley face to express how you feel. It seems like we're all connected, right? But sometimes it doesn't feel that way. In this fast paced digital world, we often find ourselves wanting more than just interactions through screens. Yeah, this is pretty good. Let's, let's go ahead and replace that. I think that works really well. And if you felt that that was a little too wordy, one of the things that you could also do is improve readability. So let's say, um, let's improve readability so that a person with a grade eight education will understand everything, okay? Just at a first glance here, I don't think it's made a lot of changes, if any at all, quite frankly. Yeah, it's almost the same. There were a couple of differences there, but uh, obviously anytime you can improve readability uh, or design your e-learning for maybe the um, lowest common denominator audience, that can be a good thing here. And I like this, I think this is really good. So in conclusion, I'm just gonna say that I've really just scratched the surface here. I've shown you four or five different ways that you could use generate text with AI in Adobe Captivate, but it's important to note that there are probably thousands of different ways that you can use this to your advantage. If there's one thing that stands out to me, it would be that this really saves you the time of going to another tool to produce these results. So if you presently subscribe to ChatGPT or Gemini or one of these other tools, maybe you don't need to do that anymore. Maybe your uh, account with Adobe is all that you need in order to produce the kind of results that you're looking for. Experiment with this. And if you found something really interesting about this feature, by all means, throw it in the comments below. I'm sure I'd love to hear about it and many of my other viewers would as well. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.